let's take a look at the derivatives of sine and cosine. First up, derivative of sine is going to be equal to cosine. To get that, we just write down our definition, follow our nose. So we have limit h going to 0, sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h. I need to get a handle on sine of x plus h. So that's just pulling out a trig identity. So for the sum of two angles, when you take the sine, what do you do? You write down sine cosine twice, or take the sum, and then we'll load into those sine cosines, or xh, and then hx. Once I have that, put that back into our quotient, we want to collect those sine x terms. That's going to give me this gadget cosine h minus 1 over h. When I take the limit of that, okay, note the sine term has just an x in it, so that's to be treated as a constant, or limits in terms of h, so it's like the sine x is just a number. That cosine h minus 1 over h, we've done before, it's at the end of the limit section, that's going to go down to 0. For the other term, I have cosine x times sine of h over h. The cosine x, we treat as a number with respect to the limit of h. That sine of h over h, we've done that one before also. That's going to go down to 1. So the only thing that's going to survive this is going to be cosine of x. And that's going to be our derivative. All right, let's take a look at an application. So I want to take a look at, find the tangent line to f of x equal to sine of x at x equal to pi over 4. Once you get your tangent line, approximate sine of 1. Okay, sine of 1 is going to be 0.8415 roughly. Okay, what do we need? I need to write down the equation of a line. We're going to need a point. We're going to need a slope. I get my point by just evaluating that pi over 4 to the function. So our point's going to be pi over 4 square root of 2 over 2. Then to get our slope, we're going to take the derivative of sine and then put pi over 4 into there. Derivative of sine is going to be cosine. We just saw that. Putting pi over 4 in there is just going to give me square root of 2 over 2. So the equation of my line is going to be y minus square root of 2 over 2 is equal to square root of 2 over 2 times x minus pi over 4. That's our tangent line. To get our approximation, I put a 1 in there. Then that's just a calculator exercise. And then I wind up getting... 0.8589. Now let's take a look at the derivative of cosine of x. Its derivative is going to be minus sine of x. So how do we get that? Same idea. We're going to set our limit definition of derivative up. We're going to wind up having to deal with cosine of x plus h. So I go and look up the identity that goes with the sum inside of a cosine. Rule there is cosine cosine minus sine sine put our x and our h in, then we put that back into our fraction and see what happens. Again, we're just going to factor like we did in the sine problem. The two gadgets that show up are going to be the limits that we've seen before. So here, we'll have this term going to 0 as h goes to 0, and then this term's going to go to 1 as h goes to 0. So the only thing that's going to survive is a minus sine x. All right, for an application, problem. For the graph of cosine x, find all points where there is a horizontal tangent line. Now, we get that just by looking at the picture. If I draw the graph of cosine, we're looking at this, and then we notice horizontal tangent lines are going to appear at the top and bottom of the wave, so we notice that's going to happen whenever we're at a multiple of pi. So when I'm at 0, values 1, we have a horizontal tangent line, if I put in pi, we're going to be at the bottom of the trough. That's going to be y value is minus 1. And then you'll see every time you go pi, it gets you either to the bottom or the top of the wave. So every multiple of pi is going to give me a horizontal tangent line. So how do we get that using the derivative, though? So suppose we had no idea what the picture of cosine looks like. Take my derivative. Okay, remember that the derivative is telling us slope of the tangent line. So if I want a horizontal tangent line, the slope's going to be 0. So all we're asking here is find where the derivative is equal to 0. How do we do that? Well, we compute our derivative. Derivative of cosine, we just saw as minus sine. I set that equal to 0, 
and now it's just unwinding what the trig says. Okay, sine of x, if that's equal to zero, recall that sine is the y value in the unit circle. So if the sine is equal to zero, we're looking at where the y value is equal to zero or where the unit circle hits the x-axis. So that's gonna be zero, pi, two pi, and then every multiple of pi. So you notice that's gonna agree with what we got when we looked at the picture.